So as you can see, I got like a thousand dollars worth of equipment right here. And this is for my travel podcast studio. So if you want to learn what you need, all the tools, all the software, mics, headphones, all of that stuff that you need for a quality travel podcast studio, stay tuned. I think in-person interviews are like taking off and going to a different level now. So I know more, pe more people are like really interested in learning about how do I do in-person interviews? What equipment do I need? What software do I use? This is my question. I've been studying this for about two years. I've been planning this out to just have a travel studio. My goal is to have a show that I could take anywhere in the world, sit down and have a conversation with myself and three other people, or I can even rent this out to four other people. Like it's so many things I want to do with this. And that's why this setup is so important to me. So I want to kind of take you through all the key elements of it. And really there are some nuanced things in this that are really important, some good details I'm gonna get to. Let's get started. So I think the first and most popular question is microphones. I, like obviously I think that's the most important thing. You want to have high quality audio, but I think some people believe that the Shure SM7B is the best microphone. And I think it's a little overrated to be honest. As somebody that studied this stuff, I had have a bunch of microphones as you can see i have like 15 now it's ridiculous i don't even have that mic it's not really that big of a deal to me i think people go for it because it's the most expensive the most well-known expensive podcast microphone everybody jumps to it but it's really not all that great Number one, because of the price point. If you want to get four of those for your studio, you'll spend about 300 bucks per microphone. So with just mics alone, you're already over a thousand dollars, right? So that's already a reason why I don't think you should use those microphones to build your studio. Number two, this is the Shure NV7. I've used this for, man, what, a year and a half now? Amazing microphone, sounds in incredible. I think this is a perfect microphone for doing high quality content. It sounds great. You have the XLR plus USB-C input. So right now I'm using it plugged right into my computer. I don't have to use a cloud lifter, which is reason number three. You get that SM7B, you're now paying for an extra piece of software, extra tool to carry around. Then if you have four microphones like that, you gotta get four cloud lifters. It just becomes too much, it's a headache. I don't wanna do all that. And yeah, I know you could use audio interfaces and all of that stuff, but again, we wanna make this easy right? Easy to carry, right? Easy to move around with and affordable. I think sometimes we jump to the most expensive thing and that's kind of what holds people back from making great content. So I know the SM7B is the most popular microphone. That's the one you're thinking of, but the MV7 is literally right there. Like that's the best option. Now what I have is this, I don't even know this brand name. I've never seen it before until I literally look for this. This is so cool like a carry case specifically made for this kind of microphone. So, I mean, look at how perfectly this thing sits in here. Look at this, a spot for the pop filter and get a pop filter. Like you have to have this. It's maybe $2 or something. Get a pop filter. Don't not have one of these. And then I love this pouch at the top because I have the XLR cables in there too. Like it's just really, really easy to use. So as you can see, these are two of my microphones right here. I got this Shure MV7 and I have this Shure MV7. Having two microphones, I think is great. If you're gonna do a travel podcast or whatever, two microphones is pretty much all you probably will need. I only wanted to get an extra set because my thought process was, well, what if I'm renting it out to somebody and they wanna have a round table, they wanna have four people, right? I wanna have enough equipment to accommodate four people. Plus I think four is like the highest number of podcasts should go. I know you see a lot of panel shows where it's like 30 people in a room, that's just absurd. Like that's usually it's terrible content. To, 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 be honest <laughs> any panel show you've seen where there's more than four panelists is probably not good i'm just being honest the other microphone i have is the audio technica this is the atr 2100x and i think this is another quality microphone two of these now again this makes my setup really really easy this microphone comes with literally everything you need you have the usb-c cable you have the xlr connection you have everything you need they even give you a stand for the microphone Shit, how do I do this? Oh shit, I don't even know how to open a damn stand up. Shit. Keeping this in here too, this is a good blooper. Uh, whatever, I'll skip it. Like, look at this. This is a simple stand. You open it up, put it on the table, and here is this mic. It's a perfect microphone. Like, the size of this thing, the weight it is, it's perfect. Slide it right on in there when, you know, the guest is not um, walking around or anything crazy like that. Come on, man, what the hell? Why is it? That should not have been that hard. Okay, so now you could literally sit it down on the table and boom, you have your third or fourth guest, right? And again, it's two of these. So now we've covered 
the ease of microphones. I think this was for me, the most terrifying part of setting up my travel studio. Like, oh my God, how am I going to do this if I have to have four microphones? Well, that was actually the easiest part to be honest. The hard part was figuring out how I record these four microphones and cameras. So let's talk about that. So when it comes to recording audio, there are a couple of different options, right? And, and let me back up. This is important to me because I know that I want to do video and my guests that use the podcast studio will probably want video. So in my mind, I'm always thinking how do I make it as easy as possible to record video and audio at high quality. That's the whole goal here. So I had a couple of different options. One option is to get something like the Rodecaster. You've seen a Rodecaster, it's the really big thing and you can plug a bunch of microphones into it. You can plug cameras into it, it has the sound effects and stuff. And it's really, it's a lot. But from my experience in working with podcasters for almost 10 years now, people rarely use that stuff. Like most of the time people wanna have the conversation. They aren't really concerned about sound effects and all the other stuff that comes with that. Plus I've seen some issues people have when they're trying to connect other microphones that aren't real microphones to the Rodecaster. So I didn't want to go that route. Plus obviously that thing is huge. It would need its own bag as I'm getting on the plane and I'm just not trying to do that. Then there's the audio interface option. Now I have here the Scarlett 2i2. With this, I can record two people at the same time. It's really easy, but obviously that's not four, it's not enough. Another issue with this is I have to use this audio splitter for the headphones, annoying, because I tested this out and when you use this, it works, it works, but you get a little bit of static here and there and it could just be a little complicated, you know? And this just, it doesn't do enough for me. Plus I wanna make it easy, again, easy to have four people at the same time. If I had this setup and I went with this, only I would need to have two of these or upgrade to the other Scarlet where I can plug four into here. And that thing was like literally three times the size of this. It was just too much. So really the best option is this. This is the Zoom PodTrack P4. I love this thing. It's the easiest way to record high quality audio in a simple setting. When you have this thing right here, you have everything you need to record audio. You plug your XL microphones into here. The headphone jacks are here at the bottom. So that right there covers the people plugging things in, right? Now, these all balance out the audio. You can switch it from a microphone or to a phone option here. And remember I talked about having that cloud lifter with the SM7B. With this, if you do have one of those microphones, you just hit a switch. It's actually super easy. And then you have this screen here where it'll show you the levels of everybody. Like I can see it with that Scarlet 2i2. I just can't do that. I have to look at my computer screen and stuff. I like having this because when I have this, I don't need my computer. That's the fun thing. You got batteries. Now, I, me being me, as paranoid as I am, I'm probably Probably not going to use the battery option a lot. They have the USB-C plug over here and I just plug that right into my computer. So I'm probably still going to plug it into the computer for, for power or whatever, but I like that option that I don't have to record on here. The last thing I really love about this is how lightweight it is. It's not super heavy and it's not massive. So me carrying this around to be able to record for people is actually really easy, right? I just plug it into my computer, plug the microphones in, plug the headphones in, and we're good to go. Like, it doesn't take me a lot of time to get this thing set up either. Like the whole setup and breakdown with this is maybe five minutes. I kid you not, it's insanely fast. So now that we've covered microphones and how to record them, we've covered audio. Now we gotta talk about video. Video is more complex than it needs to be. So what I'm using right now is the Panasonic G7, and that would be my main camera. When you're recording a podcast setup, you wanna have three cameras. Usually one main camera that records a straight shot of you and your guests, you know, two people, and then each person or each side of the table, so to speak, has their own camera. So one camera going this way, another camera going this way. And what I'll be doing to make this super easy is using Riverside. Because with Riverside, I can use this Panasonic G7, this DSLR, uh, this DSLR as my main camera on Riverside. Then for the personal side cameras over here, the other two, I'm using iPhone. Now I know everybody likes to go, well, I gotta have the Sony or the Canon or Nikon or whatever. But to be honest, iPhones do just enough. They, they're perfect. 
me carrying two iPhones to record is not that hard. It's really not that hard. They aren't heavy. They aren't super expensive. I got an old one just lying around. I'm going to use that. I'm upgrading it to a newer phone. So this could be a phone just for recording podcasts. Like that's the game plan. And I've already tried this stuff. It works very well. Like with Riverside, you can sign in on the app on these phones. Then you just set the camera up to this is camera two for the guest angle. This is camera three for the guest angle, for the host angle. Now you have your three camera set up. And what this does is helps you avoid all the headache of like needing a camera switcher and having to worry about a bunch of cables everywhere. Like I'll have a few cables out because I have one main camera. And I do think you should have one main camera that's like high level DSLR, like get the Sony a7 or something like that. But my preference when it comes to the cameras is this Panasonic G7 because this is one of the few cameras that does a few things that you need when you're podcasting. Number one, it records endlessly. I could plug this thing up and it will record as long as I need it to. That's number one. Number two, plugging it into my computer is super easy. And again, when I'm using Riverside to record my interviews in person, I need something that's just fast to set up and easy to set up. I don't want to have a bunch of extras going on, right? Number three, it has a flip out screen, all of that stuff. Fourth, I actually have the dummy battery. I'm using that right now. Like since I bought the plug-in battery, I never use this. Like this is the actual camera battery that came with it. I never use it anymore. I don't need to. I'm always somewhere where I can plug my camera into the wall. So that's what I do. So that saves me a lot of time. I don't have to worry about batteries dying and stuff. And a lot of other cameras that are out there, they might say they look better and all of that stuff. But the truth is maybe 9% of people actually watch content in 4K. Something like 60% of people do not care whether it's 4K or 1080p. They just don't want it to be like 360 where it's like blurry. So the truth is you don't need to worry about getting three or four $3,000 cameras. Like this Panasonic G7 is maybe 500 bucks, maybe 500 bucks. Now for me, I did go and buy extra lens. This is the 25 that came with it, I think. And I got another one. I can't remember which one it was. It's a 14 to 42. And if you want to buy extra lens, it's going to be like another 200 bucks. That's worth buying. So now at this point, you spent maybe 800 bucks on your camera, but that's way better than going to get a three Sony's. Like you don't need all of that. It's overkill to be honest. I will say if you're setting up a studio that's like a home base and it's one spot, having a nice rig or whatever would be great. I love that idea. But if you're traveling with this, having two iPhones is super easy because now all you have to do is bring some basic tripods. Like I need one good sturdy tripod to hold the G7. Other than that, I need some of those simple $30 tripods from Best Buy to hold the iPhone. That's it. I don't need anything extra. So now video is covered. But something I want to break down too is with the Riverside thing, why I'm using that software, right? Because when you're recording video and then audio separately, there are a lot of problems that can happen. Number one, editing in post takes a lot lot more time. It's going to take more time to align things and then switch the cameras and all of that stuff. Annoying. The second problem that could happen when you're recording separately is something could fall out and you won't know it. What I mean by that is you could be recording and the audio sounds good and it's working, but then the camera goes out and you're like, damn, I got to go over here and fix this. Again, there are very few cameras that are recording past 30 minutes endlessly that have the dummy batteries. Like it's hard to find those cameras now. At the same time, I've seen a lot of people do this where the video is working when they're recording, but then the audio falls out. So then you're scrambling trying to figure that out. I don't want to deal with that. When I'm on Riverside, I can see everything. Granted, I have to have the computer in front of me and it is a little distraction or whatever, but I think it's worth it to get high quality content because on Riverside, it'll show me all three cameras I'm using and then it'll show me all the audio levels as well. And when I'm using the PodTrack P4, I can actually see everybody's microphone on Riverside. So now when I'm recording, I just make sure all the cameras are set up, the angles are right, and I can see all of that on my computer screen. I don't have to get up and walk to each camera, and I don't have to go and buy the ATM Mini Pro that's like another two or 300 bucks and carry that around with me. I can avoid all of that. I could just go on Riverside and plug this one camera into my computer and connect the other two phones wirelessly, just over Wi-Fi, and I'm good to go. Now, I can sit here and look at everything, make sure all the cameras are working, all the audio is working, all from just one screen. 
That to me is a high level of convenience and ease. And that's what I'm going for here. Again, that makes it super easy to make this stuff. But when it comes to the software part, I got a pro tip here for you that could be really, really helpful. I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit my podcast, especially in person interviews, because you got different camera angles, you have different people speaking. So there's two pieces of software you need to know about. Number one is Audacity. I like to record on Audacity as I'm recording on Riverside. Now I do this for a backup reason. Reasons. I don't want to lose any audio. Riverside is really good about the video, but sometimes the audio is what I'll have an issue with, right? Where I'm using the P4, sometimes what will happen is it gives me one file and everybody's on that one file. So when I'm using my other software, which is called Autopod, I can't speed up the process. So what Autopod does is you can put your video track and your audio track into Premiere Pro and just align, right? So let's say I have two people on my show, it's me and Tony. I have my video and my audio, Tony's video and Tony's audio. When I put that into Autopod, Autopod will align the clips together to where it's perfectly aligned, right? For the audio and the video, and then switch the screen based on which one of us is talking. So if I'm not talking, the camera goes to Tony. When Tony's not talking, the camera goes to me. And Autopod does this for it, I saw it, Autopod does this for endless podcast episodes. One of my clients actually had a two hour interview and I was able to edit that within maybe five minutes from just a camera angle perspective because I didn't have to go back and forth to do the Autopod just did it for me. So that's an amazing piece of software. It's like 30 bucks a month, worth it if you're doing a bunch of in-person interviews, worth it for sure. So there you have it. We covered microphones, we covered the software, we covered cameras and video and stuff. I didn't want to talk about lighting because honestly, lighting isn't a priority for me. Not to say that, that sounds crazy, but I'm not going to be carrying around lights. That might be something I add later on, but right now it's easy. It's good enough to start with this. High quality microphones, high quality audio, high quality cameras. Right? I think that should be the priority first. Something like light should come along later on. But if you're starting a travel podcast, let me know what your show is about, what you're talking about, who you're interviewing. I wanna know that down in the comments below. I wanna know what more podcasts are creating now. Like what are you, what's your show gonna be about? If you're buying this setup, let me know what it is. I'm putting all the links to all this stuff down in the description too. I always forget to do that, but I'm gonna do it this time, I promise. But if you got any other questions about any software, anything like that, let me know. Hit me up on Twitter at Chris Podcasting. I'll see you next time.